So let's start looking at compound interest investments with regular additions to the principal annuity investment. So basically, think about this as you know, a, an account, an investment you have, an investment in which you know you add money to it. So the payments aren't coming to you, they're going into the account. So payments going into the account. Okay, so you are trying to grow the investment. Okay, that's what's happening here. So you know, that payment you can see with the recur recurrence relation, the payment is plus, it is growing that investment. Okay, so let's have a think about this. Mark invested $10,000 at 6.75% per annum compounding monthly. He regularly deposits, so remember deposit means to put into a bank account, $300 per month into the account. What is the value of the investment after four years? So 48 because that's 12 times 4 or 4 times 12. 6.75% is our um, annual interest rate. He's invested $10,000. That's why it's negative. He's taken it out of his pocket and given it to the bank. The payment is negative 3000 because he's giving it to the bank. Our payments and compounding periods per year is 12. You can see we've worked it out there that that future value is positive and after four years he's going to have $29,568.34. So you really need to understand that our previous annuities we were looking at, we were reducing the investment but now we are growing the investment with our payments. So let's do some past exam questions. So from the 2019 Northern Hemisphere exam one, question 24. Robin has a current balance of $347,283.43, sorry, 45 cents in her superannuation account. Robin's employer deposits $350 into this account every fortnight. So he puts that money in every fortnight. This account earns interest at the rate of 2.5% per annum, compounding fortnightly. Robin will stop work after 15 years and will no longer receive deposits from her employer. Quite obviously, after you stop working, after you retire, your employer doesn't put the money into your superannuation anymore. Okay, at that point, you start getting payments from your superannuation. So for 15 years, uh, this situation is happening. Okay, for 15 years, she's getting $350 into that account every fortnight. The balance of her superannuation account at this time will be invested in an annuity that will pay interest at the rate of 3.6% per annum, compounding monthly. After 234 monthly payments, there will be no money left in Robin's annuity. The value of Robin's monthly payment will be closest to. Okay, so there's two situations going on here. There's two situations. 
Firstly, there's a situation where she's working. So this situation one. So she's working here. So the $350 is going into her account. And so her account is growing, isn't it? Her investment is growing. And that's, you know, that 15 years. Then she retires with however much she has at the end of that 15 years. It'll be then depo in, deposited into this annuity that then will pay out. Those payments will be given to her now monthly and that investment will decrease. Okay, we want to figure out how much she's going to get per month in this you know, last, for those 234 monthly payments. Okay, so there's a few things going on here. Let's figure out that first or half. 15 years so we know the starting point how much she's going in and the interest rate and the length of time so finance our finance solver okay so we have 15 years worth of fortnightly payments so there's 26 fortnights in a year tab uh, the interest rate is 2.5% per annum. We know that she has $347.283.5 and that is negative because it's not under her control. What is going in? It's $350 is going into that account. We can count that as negative. We don't know how much it will be in the future. And there's 26 payments per year. Oops, 26 payments per year. Compounding 26 times per year. And so, enter. So, let's write this down. We had 390 periods interest was 2.5 percent our PV negative three four seven two eight three four five payments negative three fifty future value Six seven zero seven two four eighty seven and our CPY and PPY is twenty six. Okay, so at the end of fifteen years. We have $670,724.87 in which to invest into this second scenario. Okay, so this second scenario, I'll just, yep. 
we've we know it's 234 months the interest rate is 3.6 percent the amount starting it off is remember we put it as a negative because she's invested it $670,724.87 we're wanting to work out the payment that future value is going to be zero because there will be no money left and see PY and PPY is 12 because it's now monthly okay so let's get started 234 interest rate of 3.6 negative 670724.87 cents don't know what that will be that will be zero that will be 12 as that will be tab and enter so that will be that payment she will receive coming from her from the bank will be three thousand three sorry three thousand nine hundred ninety three dollars and thirty one cents and so the closest is a which is correct so here the tricky thing is to recognize that there are the two scenarios happening okay that you had to work out first you know what's happening in that 15 years how much is she going to be left with or how much is she going to have after 15 years then you go into this second scenario where she's taking money out so this first scenario money is being pushed into it that's why it's negative and then this second scenario where money is being taken out given to Jewel, given to Robin and we have you know different PPY and all of that so we had to work out what that payment was going to be but we needed to do this calculation this all of this to figure out how much we had after the 15 years to know how much we start off with for this second period of time okay let's do this second one so again this is from the 2017 northern hemisphere exam 2 so it's a question 7 the community center receives a donation of five thousand dollars the donation is deposited into another savings account this savings account pays interest compounding monthly immediately after the interest has been added each month the community center deposits a further $100 into the savings account after five years the community center would like to have a total of $14,000 in their savings account what is the annual interest rate compounding monthly that is required to achieve this goal write your answer correct to two decimal places okay so what do we know we know that it's five years of monthly deposits and earning interest we don't know interest we know that initial amount is five thousand dollars we know the payment each month 
they put in another hundred dollars we want that future value to be fourteen thousand and that our cpy ppy oops, is 12 because it's monthly okay so we need to work out the interest rate correct to two decimal places okay right so five by 12 tab have that leave that empty five thousand and we're adding a hundred dollars each time each month we want that to be fourteen thousand and yep max twelve twelve and enter okay so we need this to be six point five four percent We need the interest rate to be 6.54%. Okay. So the interest rate for this savings account is actually 6.2% per annum compounding monthly. After 36 deposits, the community centre stopped making the additional monthly deposits of $100. How much money will be in the savings account five years after it was open? Okay, well, there's again two scenarios happening here. It isn't there. It's an, not, or two situations, those changing circumstances I talk about. So first off, we've got that first 36 deposits where we're making the additional $100 and then after that no no deposits okay so let's think about this so in 36 that's three years by the way um, now interest rate is 6.2 percent that PV is again 5,000 that payment is 100. We don't know how much we're going to have after 36 deposits. Our CPY, PPY is still 12. Okay, let's look on here. So after 36, that is 6.2%, they're the same. Get rid of that and now press enter to calculate it. We have, after 36 deposits or 36 months, we'll have $9,964.63. Okay. So, what happens afterwards? Okay, so that's then. Now, we've got two more years of monthly deposits, so that's 24. That interest rate doesn't change. We start off this period of time with $9,964.63. That payment is zero. How much are we going to have at the end is the question. So let's pop all of that in there. So that's 24, tab, tab, and that is negative 
sorry, $9,964.63. Tab. That becomes zero. And I have that as blank. And now enter. So that is 11000 11, $11,276.52. So $11,276.52. Now, you'd be needing to show exactly to the cent. Now, it's always a good idea with these type of questions to show you know, this kind of working because it is showing the examiners what you've done to calculate. Okay, so um, because this is worth two marks, there may have been a marking there for finding that future value. And then, you know, if you've shown that you've used it in your calculation, if you've gotten that wrong, if you, but if you've gotten the method right, there may be a method mark there for you. So always a good idea to write out those um, those inputs in for your calculator. So yes, your inputs for the calculator for this for this section are very relevant. Okay, oh, there we go. So yes, make sure that you are very familiar and very strong with the negatives and positives of how you enter things into your calculator. It's very easy to to forget or to become confused. That's why I like my little pocket analogy. I made a little video on that. Now just remember that even though yes we're adding things, we're adding money to our account, it's negative because it's going out of our control to the bank's control. And that's how I like to remember it.